Good morning, church. It's good to be with you today. Today we're going to be in Acts chapter 2, Pentecost. Um, an amazing event, the coming of God's Holy Spirit permanently upon his people. And in the Old Testament, his Holy Spirit would come and it would rest upon a person, but it, but uh, he would depart. Sorry, I just called the Holy Spirit an it. And that uh, is is a betrayal of the third person of the Trinity. And so I'll just call myself out there that, and use that as a time to remind that we should always refer to the persons of the Trinity as people. We use the masculine language. That's what scripture does. So the Holy Spirit, when speaking, is not an it and not an impersonal force. That's an ancient heresy, but rather... Uh, the person of God that lives within us. So I apologize for that error. And he comes upon um, people in the Old Testament, but then he departs. But now he comes and he will reside forever for those who, as we'll hear later in this chapter, are repent and are baptized, who submit to the death of themselves and are risen in newness of life. But I wanted to focus on how easy it is for people to dismiss the miracles of God and just come up with some other explanation. And in this, we're reminded that no matter how remarkable or outstanding, amazing, unexplainable an event is, people will always be able and willing to deny it. So don't think that you can ever be clever enough or powerful enough or come up with some irrefutable proof because in the hardness of our wicked, desperately wicked hearts, we can dismiss and do away with any wondrous thing that God comes comes to us with. For example here, speaking in tongues, languages from around the Middle East region, everybody understanding in their own language. And they were all astounded and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But some sneered and said, they are drunk on new wine. They're just drunk, and this is just babbling. Reminds me, um, about the middle of John, God speaks to the crowd about Jesus. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. And the people, some people heard the voice and others said, oh, it's just thundering. It's just thunder. When they're up in Galilee before Jesus ascends, some worship as they see the resurrected Jesus, but some doubt. And they say, is this, is this really what we're looking at? Lazarus is resurrected from the dead and the response by some hard-hearted leaders is to say now we have got to kill this guy because he's leading people astray we can never we can never bring up proof that is convincing enough but it is the purpose of signs and wonders to demonstrate the reality and the holiness of God's power to us who are soft-hearted so that we can be molded and shaped into how God wants us to be. And so that's my encouragement today. Be, be soft. Be like soft clay in the Lord's hand so that he can mold, he can shape and refine you. Look at his amazing miracles and make like the people in Nehemiah who repent and praise God and just recount the wondrous things that he has done. That is our job as Christians to carry that testimony forward, believing what we have seen and what we have heard and telling those things to others.